In this series of videos, I'm going to showcase my personal rigging and animation workflow. These are techniques that are very well tested and are still being used in productions today. The first thing you'll notice if you open up any of my animations is that my rigs look a little different from most other Maya rigs. I use control shapes rather than control curves. I started doing this because I found shapes were easier to select and I liked that I could put a shader on my control shapes and kind of make them transparent. I really like working with invisible controls. I like it then when no control is selected, I just see the character without a rig. And then when I select the control, I can see the rig again. However, this feature became a cornerstone of my entire tools pipeline. And now all of my tools look for shaders to determine what controls belong to a rig rather than looking for a control by name. On a humanoid rig, I have a shader for the right arm controls, a shader for the left arm controls, a body shader, and so on. And whenever I want to key a limb, say the left leg, my script grabs everything with the left leg shader and keys it. My scripts do not need to know the name of controls or how many controls there are in a rig. If my script is doing something with the left leg, it knows to grab the left leg shader, and that'll work regardless of if the rig is a humanoid, a dog, or any other creature. This is useful when I'm animating because sometimes I have a scene where I want to have a unique control just for that scene that's keyed with a specific limb. I can do that very easily. I just create a NURBS shape and I apply the correct shader to it. So say I create a sphere and I add the left arm shader to it. Now whenever I select or key the left limb, this sphere will also be selected or keyed. Every tool I have looks at these shaders to determine what to do rather than looking for a control by name. These shaders also hold any metadata I want for the rig. For instance, if a shader is applied to a limb and that limb can switch from IK to FK, then I'll add an attribute to the shader which will declare what the IK FK switch control is. In this example, the shader would also have an attribute to declare the pull vector, the IK control, and so on. So basically, if my tools need any metadata for a given limb, then that metadata lives on the shader for that limb. So you see I've been demonstrating these tools using this window over here. This is my animation toolbox. Whenever a control is selected, if that control has a different shader than the previously selected control, then this toolbox refreshes and it shows options based on what it is I have selected. For instance, I'm going to select the leg right now and the toolbox determined that I've selected something with a left leg shader applied to it and it looks at that shader and it pulls up the metadata on it. If it sees information for an IKFK switch, then it shows this IKFK switching panel. However, if the head is selected, then the tool looks at the head shader and it sees that there's this other metadata for space switching. So now it's showing an option to switch between world space, local space, or head tracking. As you saw earlier, the animator can select entire body regions using these buttons over here, which are simply selecting all controls that use a given shader. And I also have a control picker, which is part of the rig and is generated with the auto rigger. I'll kind of get into that deeper in a different video. But the important thing is these are not buttons. These are actually NURB shapes that are parented under the controls in the rig and they're pinned into place with a cluster. Because they're in 3D space, I can drag select to basically select multiple controls at a time. And because these are actually controls that I've selected, if I hide a specific controller, it's hidden both in my Maya scene and in the picker as well. So if I'm in FK mode for a limb, then my picker's in FK mode. And if I'm in IK mode, then my picker's in IK. And that just keeps everything much cleaner. I find that this is just a much easier way for me to work. So this has just been a really quick first look into how my tools are authored. If you'd like more videos like this, please hit me up on Twitter or let me know in the comments below. Thanks.